if we're with Esther Leon. Leon, yeah. Is that a good pronunciation? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a Chinese name as well, or you're always Esther? I have a Chinese name, Lan Xin Man, <coughs> okay. in Cantonese. All right. Yeah. The romanization of Xin Man is Xin Man, and that is why I've been given a biblical name by the father when I started my education in Hong Kong. Okay. So. But when you publish. I use also the yeah the English name the English Esther. Name. Yeah, Esther. Okay. What's your current job, Esther? I'm associate professor. Um, of Asia Institute, I'm with the coordinator of the translation studies at, at the University at the of Asia Melbourne. Institute. Yes. Okay, which is where we are. Okay, how long have you been doing this? Um, you mean coordinating oh, yeah. for the master program? <laughs> wow, long time. Um, no, no, coordinating this master. Oh, this master. Yeah. Uh, one and a half months. One and a half months. Okay, yes. so you just just started that, and prior to that, I was with Hong Kong Baptist University. Yeah. yeah. Also coordinating a few courses there. Okay. And in terms of research, what do you what do you um, do? Interpreting is my favorite area. Yeah. 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 I do research on legal translations as well, and research method is my current project. Research methods? Yes. For legal translations? No, research for... methods in general. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I do participatory action research. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a book project called Social Action by Research. Okay. Social yeah. Action by Research. Yeah. Or Research and Social Action? Uh, I would rather like the word by, by because okay. it is through yeah, okay. research that I'm hoping to cover. Um, to create some kind of social impact and social changes, policy changes. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk about that a bit later, perhaps. Yeah. Let's go back to your mid twenties. Where Where were you? What were you doing? I was very busy on my time mm -hmm. <laughs> during my twenties. Uh, finished my first degree, started my master degree, dated a few guys, got married, became okay. a mom, <laughs> started my PhD. In your twenties. All in my twenties. Really? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and where were you? <laughs> In UK. Oh really? Where, yeah. where was that? Um, I started off at Portsmouth and then I went up to Durham and then Lancaster. My right, final stop. Right my around. study. Yes. But you're not from the UK? No. You're from? Hong Kong. Hong Kong. What, what, what made you go to the UK? I wanted to start uh, to do a master program. Okay. So um, that had been something that I had in mind. Um, all, the, all the while, but just not too sure which one that I should go in, for. In translation then? Um, I was, well, my first degree is in literature. Ah, yeah, but okay. I got in, I'm so much interested in linguistic studies mm -hmm. because I had a very good linguistic professor then. In where? In, in Hong Kong. Okay. Yeah. So you went to the UK to do a master degree in linguistics? In linguistics. Okay. Yes. And then you moved to translation, or how did I that happen? I then became a researcher for the Southampton City Council on ethnic minorities' welfare. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's how I got interested in legal interpreting, okay. medical interpreting, yeah, welfare interpreting in the UK. So tell me about that. Were you, you, you were there employed as what then? As a, as a researcher. Right. Yeah. But then you saw interpreters at work, or what? I what, did. What, what interest? I you? yeah. I I became an interpreter myself as well. Okay. Yeah. With any training? Um, without any training, but that's something that I've been doing all along when I was young. Yeah. What as a child interpreter? As a child interpreter for my parents, because you uh, well, Hong Kong has been a colony, right? So English mm. was the official, the only official language then. Mm. And my parents they didn't speak much of English. So okay. I became. Yeah. So you were the child. I didn't interpreter. know that was something that I was doing at the time, but okay. it's just, yeah. And then you started doing it professionally. Yeah, when I was in the UK, when I was too poor to carry on <laughs> my study, I just have to do any, yeah, part-time jobs there yeah, to keep myself going. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so with no formal training. Without yeah. formal training, then. That's good. No. That's all right. I started I, I, researching. I have, I have yeah. no formal training. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess that's why it was so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> because you don't have to do things by the book. You just have There's to go no along book. and find out exactly. <laughs> no book. Yeah. At the time, now there are books. So yeah. Codes of ethics. Yeah. Okay. So um, you were outside of academic life. Mm -hmm. and how did? What brought you back into academic life? Um. I, I didn't really plan on that actually. So yeah, 
my husband was doing also a PhD study at the time. So he in, had in the UK. In the UK. Yeah. So he had all the long thinking of coming back to do academic work in Hong Kong. Okay. So I just went along. <laughs> I all haven't right. finished my PhD when I start when when I when I went back to Hong Kong in nineteen ninety seven. Yeah. Where did you do the PhD? Then? Lancaster. Okay, you finished. I at, at started yeah. off. I was about to finish by the time that I went back to Hong Kong in nineteen ninety seven. Mm -hmm. I finished it after I started my job with City University of Hong Kong. Okay. Yeah. So the PhD was in linguistics. In oh, legal interpreting. Basically. Legal interpreting. Yes. At Lancaster. At Lancaster. Okay. Yeah. Who did you do that with then? Marilyn Martin Jones, um, she supervised me on ethnography research method. Okay. That's the I the, that's what I use. And yeah. Norman Fairclough in critical yeah, discourse analysis. Yeah. Yes. That's so I got the yeah. best of both. Yes, indeed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so you come back to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Started teaching okay. and finishing writing up for my PhD thesis. All oh, right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you were looking. Uh, your, your thesis was on uh, court interpreters. Yeah. In the UK then, or um, in Hong Kong? They call them legal interpreters. Mm. So not just court, yes. because they interpret for everyone else, yeah, police, yeah. and yeah. 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 In the UK. In the UK. Okay. Yeah. All right. So in Hong Kong, did you carry on? I mean, what, I what were you did. teaching then? Uh, yeah, I was teaching legal translations, um, English for lawyers, and also. Yeah, pr interpreting studies, yeah, and research method as well. Okay. Yeah, so was that at Baptist? Is that was at Baptist. So yeah. you've been you you were I've at the same at university for nineteen years. Nineteen years. That's good. Yes. That's consistency. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes. So tell me about your development there, because you, you you came in. I with a PhD at least, but then you you managed to develop courses. Yes, yeah, develop courses and also um, starting working on impact research. That's how I got into the social actions um, part of it. Mm -hmm. So I I have seen so many talented students in Baptist University, um, but they felt very helpless in a way. They want to contribute to society, but didn't really have a way to. Mm -hmm. And this is how I started thinking of maybe involving my students mm -hmm. to do research so that they can make the changes they, they see fit for the community that they're living with. Can you give an so, example of, of what that involves? Um, for example, the medical interpreters um, in Hong Kong, they, they were not recognized as professionals, but a lot of these ethnic minorities grew up in Hong Kong, they are practicing interpreters for a long time mm -hmm. but they then they didn't have the training so they didn't have the recognition the pay was yeah horrible okay, yeah. so and that is something that I've been working with them so to develop these professional training courses to train them become training trainers so themselves. the research would feed into training courses yes so, okay yeah so that they became trainers and they also became what I call them agent of changes yes so they, they started influencing people around them, getting people to do the training, yeah. In, in that scenario, is research just the production of knowledge, or like a description of what's happening, or is it something mm -hmm. else? It is production of knowledge um, in collateral terms, in a way, because we are all part of it. So um, my research um, at the time, I, I wasn't too sure. I haven't really had a very set um, definitive goals of what to achieve at the end. It was the collaborative effort with the interpreters, mm -hmm. the practicing interpreters, um, for what they want and how uh, we, we do a lot of petitions to the government and also, yeah, um, at the same time, um, observing other people to interpret. So um, we review how that was done and how it could be, how they could be better trained and we, we um, the overall aims is to provide ethical and professional interpreting services okay. to the medical sectors. So, so if, if we're talking about that kind of research, mm -hmm. um, would you say that the role of the researcher is to describe what's happening? To describe to what's happening and also to advocate, to for advocate a particular yes, policy changes yeah, and, and, and to empower. And to empower, yes, exactly. Okay. And, I think um, because I think the RAE exercise in the UK has been catching on with the Hong Kong um, scenario as well. So they they started looking at research um, that has an impact beyond academia. Mm -hmm. So they want to see research 
researchers engage in this kind of um, research that would make society changes for the better. Do you think that's a criticism of other research? I think yes, definitely. For okay, some of the research that we've been doing, yes, okay. that have got that kind of criticism. Like you look at it and say, why bother? Is that... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, last question. I, mean, I guess we've answered it, I, I think. What kind of research do you think we need? Um, for interpreting studies, something that I'm working on right now, I think I'm trying very hard to move it away from translation studies. To be honest, well, I think it has been under, it has been subsumed under translation study for a bit too long. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I see a lot of these um, communicative studies and all of the, of the others, professional um, discourse, for example, a lot of those areas that have been very well developed, but um, we haven't really made a very good linkage with those kind of studies in a way. Translation study, I think it, we operate in completely in different ways in a way, so it might not be very enlightening sometimes for interpreters, for interpreting studies. Okay. This it seems similar, but the thing that we, we are doing is very studies. different. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's different. one thing. So yeah. uh, do you have any sort of areas, specific areas that you think need research in, in particular? Um, for my own research is very extreme. I look at empathy, cognitive side of interpreters, how mm -hmm. they function, how they work. Mm -hmm. And I also... Um, the, the interpreter's empathy with others. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How that would enable them to be a better interpreter yeah. in a way, to understand yeah. others very better good. in a way. Yeah. And I also... Um, I'm quite interested in developing these big data ideas yeah, for interpreters and translators study as well. Mm. So I've been looking at, for example, how to develop a medical interpreting apps. Yeah. Yeah. Using big data. Yeah. Okay. And I've been working So you're going to put uh, empathy into the machine? Mm, not really. I am think, I think, yeah, it has to be quite different. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and also been using um, one of my PhD students has been using AI, artificial intelligence, neural network to do Chinese medicine translation, Chinese medicine classic. Yeah. Basically. Okay. Yeah. So I think those are the two things at the moment that I'm. Yeah. Moving okay, between. that's a great yeah. mix of the interpersonal, the action, and, also, and the technology yeah. as well. Yeah. Good. That's where we'll leave it. Thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.